Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, we'll be talking about applications of limits at infinity. In mathematics, an applications problem is a problem in which a mathematical formula is used to model an actual real-world situation. In this video, we'll consider two examples involving time going to infinity. The corresponding reading for this video is in the book section 2.2. Uh, pages 109 to 114 are about limits at infinity. And more specifically, example 5 is the closest particular example to what we're doing today. Now, in today's video, there are three important concepts that will come up uh, from the previous videos and from the reading. Important concept number one is, of course, the definition and the graphical significance of limits at infinity. Remember that we have this symbol that's spoken the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is b. And remember that what it means is this. As x gets more and more positive without bound, the values of f of x get closer and closer to b and may actually equal b. And in terms of the graph, what this means is that the graph of f has a horizontal asymptote on the right. And that horizontal asymptote has line equation y equals b. That's important concept number one. Important concept number two is the technique for finding limits at infinity for a rational function. When you are finding the limit at infinity, it's the standard form of the rational function that's useful. And also remember that the limit is equal to the limit of the ratio of the leading terms in the numerator and the denominator. That's important concept number two. Important concept number three is this um, table of key results about limits at infinity for a rational function. They have to do with uh, paying attention to the relative sizes of the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator and making conclusions based on that. So the one possibility is this. The degree of the numerator could turn out to be equal to the degree of the denominator. And in that situation, you want to look at the leading coefficients in the numerator and denominator. And uh, it will turn out that the limit of the function as x goes to infinity is just the ratio of those leading terms. And the corresponding end behavior on the graph is that the graph will have a horizontal asymptote on both sides with line equation y equals a over b, the ratio of those leading coefficients. Another possibility is that the degree of the numerator could turn out to be less than the degree of the denominator. In this situation, the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x will be 0, and the graph will have a horizontal asymptote on both sides with line equation y equals 0. So in that situation, we don't care about the, the leading coefficients. Uh, the equation for the asymptote is just going to be y equals 0, regardless of what the leading coefficients are. And the third situation is this, that the degree of the numerator could be greater than the degree of the denominator. And in that situation, the limit can turn out to be infinity or, or negative infinity on, on the left and on the right. So a whole bunch of different possible combinations of those things. But the, the main conclusion is that the graph goes up on the ends. There is no horizontal asymptote. That's key concept three. There will be some new terminology in this video. Uh, First of all, the variable will be t, representing time, instead of the more common x. And also, the questions will include a part that asks you to interpret a mathematical result. This terminology appears in the Barnett book, and as far as I know, the first appearance of this terminology is in that uh, section 2.2, example 5, that I mentioned at the start of the video. In our first example, a drug is being administered to a patient by a pill. The drug concentration in the bloodstream is described by this function, C of t, capital C, where t is the time in hours after the pill was taken, and C of t is the drug concentration in the bloodstream at that time t. So we are asked to do these three things. Find the limit as t goes to infinity, interpret the result, there's that question, and then uh, illustrate the result using a given graph. So let's start with question A, find this limit. 
first of all, remember that we have to use the standard form because we're doing a limit as t goes to infinity. So all we had to do to convert to standard form was multiply out the numerator. We distributed that 5t to those uh, two terms. Now we compute the limit. So remember the key steps. We kept only the leading terms when we did this limit. And then we explained this key step where we could cancel. We explained why we could cancel. And then there was this third important step where we realized we're taking the limit of a ratio. We're dividing 5, a constant, by larger and larger numbers. So we're going to be getting smaller and smaller results, closer and closer to 0. So that tells us that the limit is equal to 0. Now this result agrees with what we would expect. Notice that the, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator is 2, and that's less than 3, which is the degree of the denominator. This tells us that the limit as t goes to infinity will be 0. In question B, we're asked to interpret the result. There's that new phrase, and we're supposed to use appropriate units. So what does it mean to interpret the result? The idea is that we have found uh, a result about the abstract mathematical function, c of t. We found that the limit as t goes to infinity is 0, but the abstract function is being used to model a real situation, the concentration of the drug in the bloodstream. What does the fact that the limit equals zero tell us about the concentration of the drug in the bloodstream? Well, to answer this, we have to remind ourselves that this symbol is an abbreviation for something that can be expressed in a less abbreviated form using a sentence. Uh, let's recall that sentence. As t gets more and more positive without bound, the values of c of t get closer and closer to zero. In other words, as time goes on, the concentration of the drug in the bloodstream decreases and gets closer and closer to zero. Uh, but remember, we were told to use appropriate units. So in this real, situ real world situation, we have units. The drug concentration is measured in milli milligrams per milliliter. So when we give our interpretation, we refer to those units. We give our interpretation using the language of those units. So that's the interpretation. In question C, we're supposed to illustrate this result using this given graph of C of t. Well, how do we illustrate it? We've got the graph. Well, the point is that this result, that the limit is zero, corresponds to a, a graphical feature on the graph. So to illustrate the result, we should draw attention to that graphical feature. The graphical feature is that there's a horizontal asymptote on the right with line equation y equals zero. So we should just uh, draw attention to that. That's the end of example one. In example two, we again have a situation where a drug is being administered to a patient. 
but this time the drug is being administered through an IV drip, an intravenous drip. The drug concentration in the bloodstream this time is described by this function. Notice there's something different here. There's a squared on that T. So we have the same three questions. Find the limit, interpret the results using appropriate units, and illustrate the results using a given graph. Well, for the limit, we can this time maybe take the shortcut. So let's just observe what we notice about the function. So there's the standard form of the function. Notice that the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. And so we need to pay attention to the leading coefficients. The leading coefficient in the numerator is 5, and the leading coefficient in the denominator is 1. So remember that we know how this is going to turn out. The limit will be equal to the ratio of those leading coefficients. That's the limit. The limit is the number 5. Question B is to interpret the results using the appropriate limits. The result is that limit expression. So that translates into a sentence. Remember that the abstract mathematical sentence is as, is as time goes on, the values of C of T get closer and closer to 5. And the, in terms of the real world situation, we write this, that as time goes on, the concentration of the drug levels off at 5 milligrams per milliliter. Question C, we're supposed to illustrate this result using this given graph of C of T. Well, again, the result that we have, the fact that there is this limit, that's this number, corresponds to this graphical behavior. So that's the end of example two. I want to wrap up with this question. Do these two examples make sense? Are they believable? Well, observe that for the drug administered by a pill, the mathematical model of example one indicates that the concentration increases to a peak and then decreases to zero. This makes sense because once the pill has dissolved in the stomach and has entered the bloodstream, there's no more drug supply. The drug that is then used up by the body in the few after that is not replenished. But for the, the drug administered by an IV drip in example two, the model indicates that the, the concentration increases more slowly and then levels off at a non-zero level. That makes sense because the concentration reaches an equilibrium where the drug that's being used up by the body is continually replenished by the IV. And of course, note that this, this doesn't really go on forever. The mathematical model is not really valid forever. It's only valid um, for the amount of time that the IV is left attached. That's the end of the video. Thank you.